because Facebook always always takes a minute we know that okay all right there we go Facebook's up all right welcome y'all Prophet David Taylor here for your weekly live prophetic word uh, I'm on every Sunday at 2 30 p.m. Central Standard Time which is now I'm on the second Thursday of every month uh, for a series I have called No More Genies, and that's up next on the 14th, second Thursday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, right here on Facebook Live, Periscope, replay on YouTube. Uh, all the links are on my website, prophetdavidtaylor.org. And then I'm on here for New Music Friday. New Music Friday happens uh, every Friday at noon, where I uh, release uh, a new song, I release a new track, I have all different kinds of music that I put out there. I have uh, music you can work out to, but that is still Christian music. I have contemporary Christian music. I have hymns. I have a whole, I have rap. I have a whole bunch of different stuff, okay? I'm going to release an EP soon of three songs that I recorded a while back. Uh, so I'm working on quite a bit of stuff, but we're going to drop some new music for you. So we're putting some new Christian music in the atmosphere. I also have what we call worship soak songs. And what worship soak songs are songs that play a while where you can create an atmosphere, where you can stay in that atmosphere and begin to worship God and create it wherever it is that you are. Okay? So that happens on New Music Friday, which happens at noon. Okay, so we're going to jump right into today's live prophetic word. So let me say a word of prayer. God, I thank you for today. I thank you for your calling. I thank you for your kindness. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your grace in which I stand, in which we all stand because of Jesus. So forgive me, O oh God, for any sin. Wash me clean and fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill my mind, my heart, my mouth, my gestures, my teeth, my tongue, every part of me, O oh God, so that you can speak through me so that the word you want spoken will be spoken. Okay? That you might be glorified and the saints will be edified and the demons might be terrified. And we thank you for it. We believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. All right. <clears throat> Today's prophetic word is watchmen. Today's prophetic word is watchmen, okay? So let me show you the scripture references to what I'm talking about. Uh, and they're both uh, scriptures where you need to read the whole chapter. You need to read the background to get some kind of idea of the context, the context of what's being said here. But we're going to read some uh, so I can give you what the Holy Ghost wants me to give you for today, okay? We're going to start with Isaiah chapter 62, verses 6 and 7. We're going to start with Isaiah, one of the major prophets of the Old Testament, chapter 62, verses 6 and 7. Okay, and I'm reading out of the Berean Study Bible, okay, and it goes like this. On your walls, O Jerusalem, I have posted watchmen. They will never be silent day or night. You who call on the Lord shall take no rest for yourselves, nor give him any rest until he establishes, establishes Jerusalem and makes her the praise of the earth. Okay? On your walls, O Jerusalem, I have posted watchmen. They will never be silent day or night. You who call on the Lord shall take no rest for yourselves, nor give him any rest until he establishes Jerusalem and makes her the praise of the earth. What does that mean to us now? Because in the context of what God was saying to the children of Israel, it's kind of clear. Okay, but what does that mean to us now? When he says, on your walls, O Jerusalem, I have posted watchmen. So the first principle we glean from that, and the first thing we understand prophetically, is that God builds walls around his people, and he puts watchmen on the walls. What Christians don't understand, and we're going to get into it later as we read some of these other verses, is that you have to stay inside the wall. Okay? You've got to stay inside the wall. That means, in a practical sense with us, you have to stay in the will of God. You have to stay in step with God. Many times the things that we see physically in the Old Testament with Israel, with the Hebrews, translate, not every time, but many times they translate into a spiritual truth, a broader truth. So many times in the Old Testament, the stuff that God did and said and established was to give us a picture 
of what it's like in his broader kingdom, in the spiritual world, in the kingdom of heaven. So the first thing we want to see is that God builds walls around his people. God is not going to leave you defenseless in this world, but God also posts watchmen on those walls. So you have to stay in the will of God. That's the same thing I talked about last week when we looked at Psalm 91. Psalm 91, because there's been ideas out there for a long time that you can just run off and do whatever you want to do, and God is going to bless you anyway. That's not that's not what the scripture says. Why would God build walls if you didn't need walls? And why would God put watchmen on those walls if you didn't need them? Because God never does anything without a purpose. And God never wastes his energy or his words or his time. He's so amazing. He's the only person that has all the time and energy in the world, but he doesn't waste any of it. Okay? On your walls, O Jerusalem, my poster watchmen, they will never be silent day or night. You who call on the Lord shall take no rest for yourselves. Let me look at that ne next part. They will never be silent day or night. This is what you don't understand about those that have a prophetic call. Because many times the Lord is waking us up early in the morning. Many times we're inter interceding, we're praying two or three or four o'clock in the morning. Many times we're, we're losing sleep. Okay, because it's kind of a round the clock kind of thing. When you walk in the prophetic, then you have to understand that the Lord is liable to come talk to you or interrupt you or call you literally any time or day or night. Okay? And sometimes you have to wake up when you don't want to get up. Sometimes you have to pray. Sometimes you have to intercede. Sometimes you have to do a lot of things. But he said not to be silent day or night. So it's kind of a round the clock call. Then he says, you who call on the Lord shall take no rest for yourselves, nor give him any rest until he establishes Jerusalem and makes her the praise of the earth. What does that mean to us in a practical sense? I like the way Marilyn Hickey says it. If you want to understand that verse, and I'm going to say it the way uh, Sister Pastor Evangelist Marilyn Hickey says it. <coughs> Evangelist Marilyn Hickey says, it's not over until we win. One more time. She says it's not over until we win. What does that mean in a practical sense? The scripture says that we're not supposed to rest until Jerusalem is established and we're the praise of the earth. What that means to us in the practical 20th century sense, until it's not over, until the children of God are established and the full blessing of God is flowing through us so that people can see the life and the blessing of God upon our lives. We're not supposed to rest until that happens. One more time, we're not supposed to rest until that happens. Do you understand that? So that means if you're not living in the fullness that God called you to live in, the first thing you need to do is get back inside the walls of his will. The second thing you need to do is you need to listen to the watchman that he put to guard on those walls. And the third thing you need to do is you need to set in your mind and your heart that is not over until you are walking in the fullness of whatever it is God called you to do. That's the practical understanding of this Old Testament truth. Okay, now let's move on to Ezekiel. Now I'm going to be reading out of Ezekiel. Uh, the next one is going to be out of Ezekiel uh, 33. Now, to fully understand what's going on here in Ezekiel 33, you really need to read the whole chapter. But I'm not going to read the whole chapter at this point. I'm just going to read down to verse uh, 9, I think. Okay? To give you an idea of what the Lord is talking about when he talks about watchmen. So Ezekiel, again, one of the major prophets of the Old Testament. And remember, major prophet just means their books were longer. It does not mean their messages were more important. It means that their books were longer. So one of the major prophets of the Old Testament, Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 1 through 9. I'm reading out of the King James Version. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchmen, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, 
If the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at thy hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall not die. He shall die, excuse me, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. Okay, I'm going to stop there, but you really need to read the whole chapter to understand what's going on. Okay, a lot to unpack there, but in practical terms, what the Lord is saying is that when you are a watchman, and this is why we need the prophetic. Now, if you go back a couple of weeks ago, I talked about what is God trying to say to us during this whole global pandemic? Okay, there are many, many points that the Spirit of God is trying to highlight stuff that he wants us to pay attention to. One of those points is the restoration of the apostolic and the prophetic. Both the apostolic and the prophetic needs to be re-acknowledged and needs to be honored in the local church and in the national church and even into the highest offices of the land. Because part of the function of the apostolic and the prophetic is to blow the trumpet when the sword is on the land. When trouble is coming, when judgment is coming, God will reveal that apostolically and prophetically. Okay? So... It's our job, those of us that flow in the apostolic and the prophetic, it's our job to blow the trumpet. It's our job to be watchmen. So if you're listening to me right now and you flow in any level of the prophetic, there's going to come a day where God is going to warn you about some stuff before it happens. And it's your job to pray and intercede for what God shows you. And then whenever God tells you to release a prophetic word, it's your job to release that word so that the people are warned okay it's your job to release that word so that the people are warned doing so by doing so what you are doing is blowing a trumpet by doing so what you are doing is letting the people know that uh, and also when you come on my video please like and share because that helps me greatly so please like and share the video when you come on so to let the people know what the Lord is saying okay but I want you to notice what verse 4 says. Verse 4 is very, very key. The Lord says that if you hear the sound of the trumpet and you take not warning, and if the sword come and takes him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. What did God just tell you? What did the scripture just say? The scripture just says that if you hear the warning and you don't take the warning and you don't take heed, you don't pay attention, to what the prophetic warning was. And the sword come and takes him away. Your blood is on your own head. <clears throat> he, verse 5, he heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. What is God saying in no uncertain terms? In no uncertain terms, he's saying that if God sent the prophetic and he blew the trumpet and he warned you, and he told you that the sword was coming and you didn't take any heed to it, then it's your fault that you died. It's your fault that you died. It's your fault that you died. Because God sent the warning, God had somebody blow the trumpet, but you didn't listen. So if the sword comes and you get taken away, that's your fault. Your blood is on your own head. You died because that's your fault because you didn't listen. Okay? Uh, but if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, verse 6, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at the watchman's hand. So thou, O son of man, talking to Ezekiel, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel, therefore thou shalt hear the word in my mouth and warn them from me. So this is for any that flow in the apostolic and the prophetic. God is going to send you warnings. God is going to send you uh, as a trumpet to warn the people. And it's your job to be sure you say what the Lord told you to say. If you say what the Lord told you to say, and if you pray and intercede the way God has called you to pray and intercede, you will have delivered yourself from the blood of the people. But if you don't say what God wants you to say, and you don't release what God wants you to release, they're still going to get taken away in their iniquity, but God's going to hold you responsible for that blood. Ugh. 
So that's part of what comes along with being a watchman on the wall. That's part of what comes along with the apostolic and the prophetic. That is why you've heard me say over and over and over again for the past month, the apostolic and the prophetic must be restored to the local church. It must be restored instead of just saying evangelists, pastors, and teachers, both apostles and prophets also must be restored to the local church, to the regional church, and the national church. But everybody's online now, so everything is national and international. But those voices, the apostolic and the prophetic, must be restored because the, the warning is going to come through the apostolic and the prophetic. And we're going to blow the trumpet and we're going to say what it is God is telling us to say. And just like you remember I told you several weeks ago when you watched my video, I talked about if we don't learn the lesson, then worse things are coming. If we don't learn the lesson from COVID-19, and I listed four or five or six things that God wants us to repent of and correct. I told you, if you don't learn those lessons, then worse things are coming. So what just landed in North America? What just landed was something they're called murder hornets. Murder hornets. And now there's these hornets, these bugs that, that they say that their sting is so terrible, it feels like hot liquid metal piercing through your skin and coursing through your body. And they're lethal. They're lethal to humans and animals. And they're calling them murder hornets. They are now here in North America. Okay? So I keep trying to tell people what we are experiencing now is a Noah-type event. This is a Noah-level event. This is stuff coming out of the book of Revelation. God is in heaven opening seals and opening books and opening vials. What does that mean? God writes down everything humans say. He writes down everything that we do, and he writes down the motives, the motives that we have when we do it. Let me say that again. God writes down everything we say. God writes, God writes down everything we do, and God writes down the motives. He writes down why we do what we do, and God keeps a book of your life. He keeps a book of, of your record, excuse me, in the heavenly realm with him. And when God has had enough, when the season, season of judgment has come, when there has been no repentance, no fear of the Lord, no faith in God, no love for God, then God will begin to open his books. God will begin to open the seals, just like in the book of Revelation. God will begin to uh, release the vials of his wrath. God will, believe, will begin to open his judgments. That's where we are right now. Okay, in a season, a season of judgment. It's not that God's not having mercy, because God is having mercy even in the midst of judgment, but this is a Noah-level event. This is a Noah-style event. <coughs> and that's why if we don't repent and hear what the Lord is saying through the apostolic and prophetic, like I told you several weeks ago, worse things are coming. Well, now the murder, the murder hornets are here. Bugs that are so terrible, or their sting is so terrible, you can't tell me that that's not straight out of Revelation. Where their sting is so, so terrible, it feels like hot liquid metal in your system. That's here now. Okay? Because we have to, to get it together with God. We have to repent of the things that God is tired of. Repent of the things that have caused this terrible judgment to come upon us. And reestablish and turn to the things that are important to the Lord again. That's what excuse me, we're supposed to be doing during this time. Okay? And if we don't get it right, things are going to keep happening, keep happening until more and more people get wiped out. Uh, I'm going to read Ezekiel 3, uh, 16, 17, and 18. Ezekiel 3, 16, 17, and 18. At the end of seven days, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, give them a warning from me. If I say to the wicked man, you will surely die, but you do not warn him or speak out to warn him from his wicked way to save his life, that wicked man will die in his iniquity, and I will hold you responsible for his blood. I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. That's pretty clear. So that's why those of you that flow in the apostolic and the prophetic, that's why you feel the burden of the Lord in your heart and in your spirit. Okay, you are burdened by God to release that apostolic word. To release that prophetic word because you have to warn people so like i did i strongly encourage you because i don't want to do a full rehash of all the videos i strongly you go encourage you to go back about a month maybe a month and a half of my videos on this page 
and listen to those prophetic words because I lay out in detail the kind of stuff that the Spirit of God wants us to turn from and turn to. To repent, according to the scripture, means to change your mind, specifically to change your mind towards godliness. So in other words, God wants us to throw out our old thinking and to embrace his thinking. And don't think I'm not doing that in my, in my life. Remember, I tell you all the time that there's nothing I'm saying to you that I'm not living through. And, and God has definitely been dealing with me on some things and he's been giving me some new thoughts. And the cutting process sometimes is painful, but the peaceable fruit of righteousness, the result is wonderful. Thinking God's thoughts are better than my thoughts. Doing it God's way is better than doing it my way. Okay? So once again, I'm not talking at you, I'm talking with you as a fellow traveler, as a fellow brother in Christ. Okay? But we do have to repent. We do have to turn from our ways to his way. That's the point of the warning. God is saying, I'm not pleased with this, but I am pleased with that. So turn from that which does not please me and turn to that which does please me. Okay? And the Bible says clearly that it's the job of anyone that's appointed by God. Those of you that are called to intercession, some of you are called to intercede from, for your family. Some of you are called to intercede for a specific house, a specific church. Some of you are called to intercede for a region. In the United States, that means a group of states. Some of you are called to intercede for a nation. Some of you are, are called to intercede for the nations. Whatever your call is, whenever God wakes you up two or three or four o'clock in the morning, whenever God gives you a prophetic word to release, it's your responsibility to release that word so that the people might be warned. And God says that if you do that and you warn them like you're supposed to, if they don't pay any attention to it, then that's on them. Okay? If they don't pay any attention, if they don't want to hear, then that's on them. And you have delivered your soul. But if you don't say anything and you don't pray anything, they're still going to have to answer for their iniquity, but now that blood is on your head. That's why you feel the burden, again, so many times as an apostle or prophet, or when you flow in the apostolic and prophetic. Because when you flow in the apostolic and the prophetic, or any of the fivefold ministry gets really, God will always put his heart in your heart. Because God puts in the heart of the pastor, the shepherd's heart. The, the good shepherd that given his life for the sheep, that's the heart of any pastor. That's God's heart in your heart. Well, if you flow in the apostolic and prophetic, you're going to get the warnings. You're going to get the hatred of sin. You're going to get the intense desire for people to turn away from their wicked ways. That's the part of the heart of God you get in the apostolic and the prophetic. Okay? So I want to encourage those of you today that flow in the apostolic and the prophetic. You have been called to that watchman anointing. There's a reason you see the things going on in your family. There's a reason you see the things going on in your church. There's a reason you see the things going on in your state and in your government. But we are not supposed to react naturally and just start cursing or just start talking about people or just start, start warring carnally or in the natural. Not that we're not supposed to vote or protest. That's not what I mean. But we know how to war and we're supposed to war in the spirit. And one of the, the weapons we have to war in the Spirit is confession. We can say the Word of God. Intercession, where we pray and cry out to God for the sins and the burdens and the heartaches of the people. And then the prophetic. Okay? And the prophetic is when intercession is when we cry to God for the people. And the prophetic is when God speaks to the people. And so when He gives us His prophetic word, it's our responsibility to release it. So that's why I'm on here. Releasing the prophetic word, that's why I'm on here saying what the Holy Ghost would have me to say so that that blood is not on my head because I don't want that blood on my head. When it's all said and done, I want the record to reflect that I said what the Lord told me to say, so I put the warning out there. If people don't want to hear it, then that's not on me. And if they die because they didn't listen to God, then that's not on me. Okay? So I want to encourage those of you that deal with the apostolic and prophetic to release your words, pray your prayers, confess what the Holy Ghost tells you to confess. And I want to warn those of you that have that apostolic, apostolic, prophetic, and watchman call, but you're not walking in it. If you don't say anything and you don't pray and you don't warn the people in your family, your friends, in your state, in your school, online, I know everything's online now. We don't have much person to person. But if you don't warn, if you don't release it some kind of way, 
then that blood is going to be on your head. God is going to require that of you. I know that's not pleasant. I know that's rough. I know it's tight, but it's right because God said it. So this is what comes along with being in the apostolic and the prophetic. So by all means, confess, intercede, and prophesy. Okay? Amen and amen. That's the prophetic word for this week. And when you see me close, close my eyes and pray in tongues, I'm asking the Holy Ghost if there's anything else that needs to be released. Financially, any other prophetic words, any healing, and any deliverance. Okay? Here we go. Ooh, yes, Lord, I heard I heard a beautiful word in my spirit. The word I heard in my spirit was breakthrough. Ooh, yes, I receive it. I believe that. Okay, breakthrough is just what it sounds like. Breakthrough, pushing through the crowd, pushing through the ceiling, pushing through the wall that the enemy has laid up, pushing through the snare and the net, pushing through the spirit of hindrance because the Lord revealed to me a couple weeks ago. Sometimes, uh, like when Daniel prayed, God released the answer from heaven but the enemy uh, released a spirit of hindrance. Apostle Paul talked about a spirit of hindrance where Satan hinders us. There's a spirit of hindrance that the devil releases to where your blessings are trying to get to you and the devil's fighting with all his might to keep those blessings from manifesting in your life. But the Holy Ghost just showed me and I saw it like a daybreak. I saw it like a yellow orange dawn sunrise coming through very thick uh, crimson and orange clouds. That's what I saw in the spirit when the Holy Ghost gave me that word breakthrough. Okay? So I receive it. I believe it. I confess breakthrough in my life, and I encourage you to do the same. Okay? Let me see if there's anything else. Okay? I think that's it. All right. Amen, amen. That's a prophetic word for this week. God bless you. Thanks to those of you that... Watch me live. Thanks to those of you who watch me live on Facebook Live, Periscope. Watch the replay on YouTube. Remember, my quarter two prophetic devotional is out where you can build your day-by-day -day walk with God in prophetic, putting out new music every Friday, meditative music, uh, workout music, uh, rap music, hymns, contemporary gospel music. I'm going to release an EP very, very soon with some new gospel tunes uh, along with some videos. Uh, and I'm on here live every Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. That's this time. Every second Thursday of every month, uh, Thursday night, 7 p.m., for my No More Genie series, all right? So amen and amen. God bless. And remember to release that prophetic word. If you're called to be a watchman, release that word and do your job and save that blood from being accounted to your account and being on your head. Amen. God bless. I'll see you next time.